Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash catelecast. This month, we're recommending Star Wars The Force Awakens by Alan Dean Foster. This is the official novelization of The Force Awakens, so if you can't get enough of the movie, now you can hear more about Rey, Finn, and Poe, and I guess those other people from Star Wars too. So go to audibletrial.com slash catelecast and grab your free audiobook and help support the telecast. Greetings, travelers. My name is Nick Murphy. And my name is Satchel Drakes. And welcome to Cinephilia Anonymous Telecast. We're going to take you on an interstellar adventure through the darkest corners of your mind to unlock your hidden passion for cinema. For cinema. cinema. One day I'll know, like, more of that intro. One day I'll know it by heart, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read it off a script every time. <laughs> uh, so, hey, guys, welcome to a, a special episode of uh, the Telecast. Today we're going to be talking about... A new movie, not even available on any kind of home media yet. We're just... Though soon, hopefully. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> not soon enough. Yeah. I so, saw... I was out late at night after I saw it. I went back and I saw it on iTunes. It was available for pre-order already. Oh, yeah. And I was like, dude, I will do this. I pre-ordered a Blu-ray <laughs> already. <laughs> you did? Okay. <laughs> so it's not just me. I was no. like, I will do this. <laughs> Um, but this is crazy, but also bring it home soon. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, uh, like our troops. I can't wait. <laughs> bring home our force. Awakens. We're talking about force awakens. Uh, if you guys couldn't clue in from the title of the podcast or our super geek nerddom about the whole mm-hmm. thing, yeah, um, man. let me, let me, let me grab some, uh, quick little info about the movie. I guess we should probably preface this that by saying that we're going to be talking about the movie in uh, in great length. Oh, spoilers all up the wazoo. So just, yeah, so, yeah. You might want to leave, or if you saw it, you might want to stay and yeah. fight with us. And yeah, we would love to hear um, other people's thoughts on it. So like, yeah, definitely like tweet at us and let us know, you know what you're thinking. And yeah, we'd love to hear more about it. So uh, we're talking about Star Wars The Force Awakens, which is uh, episode seven, directed by J.J. Abrams. Uh, written yep. by Lawrence Kasdan, J.J. Abrams, and Michael Arndt. I don't know who, who is Michael Arndt. What has he done? Oh, he wrote for Little Miss Sunshine. Okay, okay. Tight. Toy Story 3, great movie. Magic. Oblivion, Hunger Games Catching Pretty Fire, tight. Inside Out. Good product right, This guy, he's got credentials. No doubt. <laughs> um, so Satchel, uh, you know, give us kind of like a rundown of what the movie is about. Okay, sure. Oh, let me think about this. There's so many things. There's so many things going right? Right on. Okay, so let's uh, let's assume everyone has seen uh, a Star Wars movie, right? Sure. And yeah, yeah. So no need to go back crazy. We won't go crazy backstory. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We won't do that. Um, I'm gonna go super high level. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So oh God, yeah, this movie is in some ways a passing of a baton. Hmm. Um, both like outside of film cast wise and also within the film yeah, yeah, like, character wise literally in the film um, the passing it, of a baton yeah it a, is like and a uh, a you know crystal powered laser sword baton yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> it is a in its entirety the beginning of a coming of age for or one of the first coming of age for Finn Mm-hmm. Who is an ex stormtrooper? Yes. Um, who kind of like is hellbent on running and restarting his own life. That kind of shifts, and he finds purpose and meaning in latching on to the kind of narrative of Ray mm-hmm. and how Ray, Ray, who is essentially this, uh, for all intents and purposes, right now she's an orphan. Right. She's an orphan who had been sort of like doing her own thing for the longest while and got wrapped up in the drama between the, the rebels and the Imperials. And, um, 
And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there yeah. <laughs> that's tied into the old movies. Yeah, dude, there's a ton of stuff yeah. to, uh, to totally unpack on there, man. There's a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a thick ass movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, uh, and all of it is just, you're sitting, you're, you're just sitting before splendor. Yeah. All of it. I agree. Um, so how many, how many times did you, uh, did you see the film so far? So far, I've seen it two times. Nice. And I was supposed to see it three times, but I ended up seeing Sisters because I was hanging out with someone who wanted to see Sisters. So, yeah, nice. Yeah. There you go. But like, but nonetheless, um, yeah, I've seen it two times so far, and seeing it the second time was so valuable. It yeah, was so important. Um, I'm probably I'm, I, I plan on seeing it since since I sort of have off this whole week. I plan on seeing it tomorrow, grabbing a matinee because I haven't seen an IMAX 3D yet, and I want to see, I want to have that experience. Yeah, it's it's a good. So we had kind of a. Uh, I've seen it three times thus far, so I saw um, like a regular 2D screening. I've had kind of like this like escalating viewing experience where I saw it in 2D, and then saw it in 3D, and then saw it in 3D IMAX. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. So there's always like new things to to experience. So like seeing it in 2D the first time was like, I was like, oh man, this is this looks great. And then 3D yeah. is like, wow, everything pop, man. Like it, I remember um, when the first okay, so you liked it. That enhancement was like tight. Yeah? Oh yeah, yeah. I thought it was okay, great, cool. man. I thought it was like it was. It wasn't like in your face. Like, like I feel like everyone's kind of gotten the hang of 3D, where it's like it doesn't have to yeah. be in your face, um, and it just kind of has to be there to kind of yeah. It's be, all like, whoa, that ray gun ray went right across my face. Right. I jumped back. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just got to be more yeah. of like a window instead of a painting kind of thing. You know, it's just yeah. got a little bit of depth. I think works nicely. There are some like great shots that just super work in 3D. Like, there's a shot of the of a, like a star destroyer. Like with like a, its nose pointed at you, and it comes like right out of the screen. It's like it's like jarring. It's like whoa, that's awesome. That's very cool. that's cool. Okay, now I'm hype. Yeah, so yeah, it definitely totally worth. And like you know, all the space stuff and like the the dog fighting, all that is like amazing. Oh, um, man. But yeah, man, oh, it man. was like such a great experience. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I saw it um, uh, a little early, um, which was kind of cool. Um, yeah, man. But also, like... Um, and you had to hold it in for so long. I, I had to hold it in for, like, two days because all my friends, like, you know, the, like they, they they didn't really get to get around to it till Sunday because tickets were sold out in yeah. all these different locations or whatever. It was so hard. It's like, I'm filled with so much joy. I want to share it with you. <laughs> and, like, I start talking about it, and they're like, nope, you're ruining it. You're the yeah. worst. Stop. Oh shut God. up. It, that was the hardest part is, like, I had this experience that I couldn't, like, share with anybody. And it, it was, like, it, it was like a press screening. So it, it like, I, I don't know. I felt, like, stifled. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, there were parts like I wanted to like cheer and like jump out of my seat, and I was like, oh, oh my yeah. god, this is amazing! But like, I was like, oh, I'm around professional people, I gotta like hold it. Oh in. yeah, that's you know what I mean? right. Because you're around like, oh, yeah. yeah, I guess. But so, then yeah, when yeah. we saw it on, we saw it on Thursday, my wife and I, and like, you know, everyone was clapping. Everyone was clapping. clapping. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. We had, we had. It was awesome. Like, like parts that like I wanted to cheer in at the other part, like everybody was just like, yeah. And I was yeah, like, ah, my people have arrived. Yeah, like when the when the, when you find out the garbage is the Millennium Falcon, oh my like God. It's such everyone a good... started clapping. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Such a good reveal. <laughs> I was talking about this with Paul the other day, and like it it works on so many levels. So if you were if you were like oblivious to all things and you just like strolled into this movie, right? Mm-hmm. That like line and that reveal, it's not like it's super fan service, but it's fan service that works without having any prior knowledge of anything you know what i mean yeah. so she sets it yeah. up she's like she's like oh that one's garbage and then, you know it blows up and then they're like okay that one will do so you, if you have no idea what the millennium falcon is right you could just mm-hmm. be like oh that's really funny because she said that one was terrible but now because of the situation right <laughs> it works perfectly like right it's just great man such good writing it's like yeah like yeah there are no like there's never really inside jokes per se like, yeah there, there yeah. are it, inside jokes but everyone can enjoy the jokes <laughs> yeah and if you know the inside joke it's like even better it's not like it's not like an yeah. inside joke like like hits and then just like doesn't land you know what i mean they're all like yeah, working yeah. like no matter what no matter what your your star wars expertise level is yeah. um so so i mean obviously we're both like gushing about it but like you definitely enjoyed it you you liked it oh man without a doubt i loved it yeah there's there's so much more that i want to see catch again a couple more times actually um it's oh man, I'm, I'm such a sucker for limited edition things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
especially prints in particular. They're like, oh man, there's this limited edition lithograph print that you can get if you see Star Wars in IMAX 3D on Sundays oh. between these two specific dates. What? And I'm really? so in for seeing it. Oh, dude, I want to do that. I guess it would be a fourth time, like this following Sunday. But yeah. you know what? It's like, when am I going to see it again? Never. So yeah, yeah. Oh, you know dude, what I mean? Awesome. Like this is this is the window. Yeah, and it's um, it's, pretty it's, interested. it's it's an experience at this point. It's not just um, it's not just kind of a movie. You know what I mean? It's not it's not yeah. just like ah, I'll just see it at some point. Like you know, you want to see this movie as big and as bad as possible. Like the the way I feel about like the Hateful Eight, like they're making a whole spectacle of it and they're making a whole like road show out of it. So like you want to see it in that presentation, like in that, like this is what the director intended. This is how you should see it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. How did you feel? Um, like story, like how, like how big of a, like a, like are you a pretty big star Wars fan? You're just kind of middle of the road or, you know, like how, what's your, what's your prior star Wars experience going into this? I think, um, I think so. I saw mine, I saw, I saw star Wars, later on Mm -hmm. like i saw i saw a new hope when i was i saw a new hope when i was like a kid um but even then like like i I guess none of neither of us saw it like when it actually came out but i saw yeah (laughs) yeah i saw i saw a new hope when i was a kid and um and then i saw episodes one two and three because those came out when i was like in middle school right um so i would see those with friends and then we would always like make an event out of it and Mm -hmm. like yeah it was just sort of like a really interesting spectacle experience that uh, with lore that I that that I think that I enjoyed enough to like, um, you know, there were some like street artists I really liked that would like put like uh, make like tributes to like Star Wars stuff or like I would see like different kinds of like merchandise and I always liked the world and the environment yeah and like the characters so like I think that th- I always had like a bit of an investment on like the merchandise style on merchandise side and on like the art side, like creating different like star Wars things. Yeah. Um, never, never an obs- obsession to the point where I'd be getting into like conversation or arguments about like the lore the world, and like yeah. the story and the worlds around it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to say like for it's for the sake of context, like a notch above typical American investment into the star Wars world. Uh, but definitely not, uh, feeling necessarily like, oh, then you must be a huge fan, you know? Right, right. Um, but I'd say this film has sort of pulled me into that now. That, that was my next <laughs> question. Like, like has this like catapulted like yeah, your fandom for it? <laughs> yeah, it really has. It's really, it's really uh, pulled in my investment and kind of like piqued my interest on the entirety of the thing. Um, leading up to it, I like rewatched um, the original trilogy and. Um, really just fell in love with all of it um just through and it's it's kind of like it's kind of double-edged in a kind of way where it's like an appreciation for just like the film itself Mm -hmm. and then also an appreciation for all of the sets and like everything that went into putting putting it together and like creating something that for all intents and purposes for not all of it because i've heard people talk about all the different things that like george lucas rip well lifted rather from like things at the time but like yeah, yeah but alongside that just seeing all of the things that were kind of created out of nothing you know yeah what I mean? it's and, incredible to see you know in a world kind of before cgi and stuff like all of these effects they're you know they're practical sets and they're they're like magic tricks you know what i mean this is like this is when like filmmaking was like like a sleight of hand kind of thing and and it was like tricks and and all these different techniques to kind of bring these things to life and it wasn't just like um you know the world <laughs> you couldn't do everything there were limitations to like the technology and and the in the art form itself yeah. so and yeah. it was incredible to see like what they did um to bring something like that to life with with what they had like it's 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 incredible like <laughs> no one yeah. had made a movie like that before i mean there had been sci-fi movies and stuff like that but not to this level not with this level of excitement um you know back in the day it was it's i really want behind the scenes content oh, i dude. want it really bad um there's this guy um i can't remember his name but uh he made uh, a trilogy of documentaries uh they're fan documentaries it's called um star wars begins um building empire and uh return to jedi right Mm -hmm. and what he does is he takes the movie and takes um audio commentaries and audio interviews and plays them over the movie and then splices in um behind the scenes footage that have that's been around 
you know, in various documentaries, like other documentaries and like released in like promotional things, like behind the scenes photos. And he puts it all together, like as the movie plays out. So it, each movie winds up being like half an hour, 45 minutes longer. So like you might watch like the Death Star explode, but then he'll show you like test footage of them. Oh blowing man, up. that's it's cool. cool. And it, you know, it's not just like, it's not just the main creatives. It's, it's a lot of people. It's like production designers. It's, you know, a lot yeah. of is a, Ben Burt, the sound designer and stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff. And he posted it all on Vimeo. It's it's a fantastic Oh, okay, watch. great. Yeah, really, really cool, man. Uh, I would, yeah, super suggest that if you just kind of want to, like, delve back into, like, the filmmaking process of it and, like, how they achieved a lot of this stuff. And it's all, most of it is all, like, pre, um, you know, before, like, George Lucas added all that extra stuff. It's kind of, like, more, it's more based on, like, the 70s and 80s, kind of, like, putting this thing together. Oh, you mean like practical? Yeah, like really effects? practical yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's and, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that, like that, and then also the practical stuff that they did in the Force Awakens as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh my god, I, like I like, knew there was going to be a focus. Like they they've been like making a big like stink that that was going to be like a big part of it, and it it definitely delivered. Like there's this like this bird creature like pecking at this thing, and I was like, man, that's a puppet. And I was like, normally you'd be like, ah, it's just a puppet, but there's something endearing about it in this world. You know, because yeah. there there are like CG characters in the, in this movie, and like they work, and right. in, in a weird way, like like I'm, Maz, yeah, and Maz like is is she's a great character, but like and, and not to be like critical about it, but like she almost seems like out of place in this like homegrown practical practical world, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, but like especially because she's in the cantina, not cantina place, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Where well, like and, there's all these. So how practical did you feel aliens. about that? So so like the, some of the criticism that the movies like come up with is that it's it's a new hope and or empire just together and like a rehashing of that. Like what was your, what was your thought process? I have some thoughts on it, but how did you feel about like that criticism? Like, did Uh, you feel that at all? I didn't. I feel like there's a place for that. Right. Um, Though I understand the sentiment because I think about, I have the complete saga on Mm Blu-ray, like in that little book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, with that comes like, the original trilogy that has some practical effects, but then also has CG parts as well. Right. And the CG is really jarring. Right. Like, uh, it's, it's super jarring. Yeah, it really (laughs) is. And, and I wonder if it's because of the CG at the time, because I think that's part of it as well. Some of the physics like seems like kind of off on like some of the older characters. But, um, when I watched the force awakens, I didn't see that divide. No. And CG was used, very intentionally. So, like, CG was obviously used for, like, anything that was, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it's aerial. I mean, it's in space, but it's not aerial because yeah, it's in space. Yeah, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. orbital or whatever. Sure, anything sure, that was, like, sure. orbital and space, like, clearly not practical. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But convincing nonetheless, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I, you know, I did... I didn't really have an issue with um, with that sort of divide, like some alien creatures being CG and then some alien creatures not being. Yeah. Um, did, how about you? Like, uh, I it... mean, it 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 felt like everything felt like natural. Like there, it was it was really for me watching it. Like I was expecting like I was expecting a few sour notes to hit, and for me to you know make a face like Ugh, that didn't that doesn't sit right or something. You know, yeah. like as if like. I'm an expert and I know I'm like critiquing this thing, you know what I mean? Sure. Enjoying, but like I anticipated like something like, ah, there, I'm sure there'll be something that like, I don't, uh, not, not that I don't agree with. That's not the right, that isn't, that's not the right portrayal, but something that like just doesn't sit right with me. And there were, there were a couple of times where it happened and then immediately the movie like course corrected and like made me feel okay with it. Um, so like, uh, so two Go prime on. examples, uh, uh is, <laughs> um, uh, when uh, Ray is like scavenging that that crash star destroyer, she like slides down that thing, and I was kind of like, "That's kind of weird." I was like, "Oh, is this gonna be like a little kid kind of thing?" Where like, because I guess I didn't really understand that there was like Ray at first for some reason. I just thought it was like another character or something. And I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be like a little kid kind of thing." And I was like, "Why is she sliding down?" And then I was like, "Oh, that makes sense because that's where she's carrying all the stuff, and it's a giant dune. It just makes sense, right?" So that's like yeah. a little nitpicky thing that that I was like dismissed right away. I was like, "Ah, that's yeah. fine." And then the yeah, other yeah. one that that really kind of hit me was when um, they're talking to uh, Snoke, the uh, the the kind of big, tall bad guy. Snoke, big tall bad guy. The, he's like the grand or superior. What what is his name? He's uh, 
Supreme Leader Snoke. He's like the guy that Kylo Ren and um, the other Imperial military dude are like reporting to. He's like a hologram. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah, so yeah. he came up on screen, and I was like, well, what is this giant dude? I was like, he's going to have like a giant, like, like an actual giant guy in this universe. I was like, that's so weird. Why would they do that? What a strange <laughs> thing. And it just took me out of the movie for a second. And then I, you know, got back in, like, watching it. And then, you know, he's a hologram. I was like, oh. Oh my God! Yeah. Okay, that's great. Oh my God, what a great, what yeah, a great yeah, moment! Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I had this like weird thing where I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm ready to dismiss this whole thing because yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. And then they, like it sets me like totally fine. I was like, oh, oh, thank God, that's great, great move, great move, man. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, yeah. So like, I like loved it, man. Like, I, I, I cannot sing enough praise about this movie. And I had this like internal. Uh, turmoil where I saw it. At, like, so I, when and you I know saw what it, it is like a lot of it is like the suspense of belief is is strong enough that yeah. a lot of this stuff is like okay, like it's like okay, yeah, it's fine, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And I, I wanted to be, I wanted to, I wanted to be critical of it in the sense that I didn't want to tear it apart, and I, I, I don't like when people like do that for the sake of tearing something apart, and I think that's that's why. You and right. I enjoy doing that because it's not about being negative and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's and more I, I kind of want and I want to clarify. Like, I imagine like in the season right now, like right after the film's release, there's going to be a lot of content, like video content that's on the internet, podcasts that come out that talk about this film. And I want to clarify, like, by no means do we consider ourselves like the oracles of taste. No, when we no, talk about we're this. not. This is very much like working anything. through it. Yeah, yeah, we're not authorities on any of this. So, yeah, people should not take our opinion as fact or 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 you know bible verses <laughs> you know yeah 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 it's purely just like two dudes talking about it right that's uh, <laughs> what i was gonna say yeah like most films it's two dudes talking about a film yeah. <laughs> right exactly but like yeah I, I i had this weird moment where i wanted i wanted to be critical of it in the sense that i knew people would like because I'm, I'm a huge star wars fan and i know people would ask me be like oh is it good and my immediate re- reaction was yes it's great it's 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 perfect if not near perfect like it there's yeah it's it's flawless for me. I loved everything about it. And I wanted to just not have that be my gut response. I wanted to be like, is it is it a great movie because I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I and that's the reason I liked it a lot, or is it actually a good movie? So like I saw the movie and I took like like I took like an Uber home and I just like sat there like looking out the window, just like pondering it. <laughs> like and so uh Paul and I were were gonna work on stuff when when we were I was we were done. So I texted Paul and I I was like Hey, I'm done, man. Like, you know, come over and we'll, we'll get to work. And he's like, how was it? And I was like, it's great. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So he like comes to the door and I'm just like sitting there like pondering. I'm just like analyzing like every part of it. And then like I came to the, the, the you know, like I was just like, nope, great movie. I loved everything about yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. And it doesn't matter that I'm a fan of it. It just, it works. It's, it's just perfect. Yeah. It's just a great movie, man. Yeah. Um, and I think there, there are going to be people out there, like you, like you were saying, it's going to be, it's going to be almost like fashionable to be, to, to have the, the opposite, um, reaction to that. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a romance in being the antihero and yeah. Like, and I think yeah. people, some people will embrace that and be like, Oh, it's not actually a good movie because of X, Y, and Z because everybody loves it. Here's the reasons why it's not. Right. And you know, I'm sure those, those, those arguments will be because of space the vocal minority logic. that's not the minority right yeah all these right. random things that like yeah no one took into consideration because it's tertiary anyway right exactly <laughs> people will be like oh man well you know they can they can they can get to a planet in like two minutes and it's like yeah man they, they can get to a planet in the two minutes because it the story decided that they can get to the planet <laughs> in two, in minutes, two minutes yeah 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 they can stop the giant <laughs> planet blowing up planet you know because they have they have they have space airplanes and laser swords man it's fine you know what i mean like i just yeah that always bugs me when people people are like easy to dismiss like something because of a logic point but then like totally disregard like all other they want they want the suitcase they want the suitcase explained right i've i've <laughs> yes, coined exactly. that term no, i've coined that term perfect, i use man. it with my friends it's just like yep. i don't need you to explain the suitcase like yeah. and then i have to unpack why i've yeah, what that we always means, say. Well, like, I think we talked about it on the other thing before. We're like, um, Harry Potter can do magic because he can do magic. You know, right? Magic A is magic A. It just it just yeah. works because it's magic. That's it. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So like, 
<clears throat> I heard like some criticisms about like the that that this movie um uh story wise and like pacing wise is very similar to uh a new hope or like empire strikes back in, sure. in like a like a plot line kind of thing and i think um i think that's a that's a that's a valid um like observation but like i think to dismiss the movie uh because of that doesn't really make sense because star wars a new hope is is basically a hero's journey you know it's it's the man with a thousand faces that like joseph campbell like wrote about like there's all of our stories like throughout time all kind of follow these these like plot points right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. star wars was that that journey which is usually like a fantasy kind of thing but set in space so it just makes perfect sense for like another movie in that series to follow that archetype you know what i mean yeah i agree yeah and like <laughs> we were walking out of the theater and um the people in front of us <coughs> excuse me people in front of us they were like oh they just built another death star what they didn't learn after two other times that it wasn't gonna work and i was just like man you guys missed it man you guys missed the point guys missed, yeah it just didn't make any sense you know it's like it's like yeah it, it's <coughs> the reason they're gonna do like another death star is because that's the thing that they need to like intimidate like that's Right. That's the Death Star in Star Wars is space nukes. You know, like yeah, there's just a nuclear bomb, and that's like the thing that can can. Get, and I was thinking about it more like critically, like in the world too. So I was thinking, so the first Death Star, they build it, and on their test run, they blow up an entire planet. Right, right. Sure, right. they don't get to use it again. Sure, the rebels blow it up and stuff like that. But on its, on its test run, it annihilates an entire planet full of people. You know, billions of people like yeah. <laughs> destroyed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so then they build another one and it's not even done and they're still building it and they don't get to do anything with it right so wouldn't it make more sense for them to just be like okay we're gonna try this thing one more time and then this thing it's ready to go in on its initial run it blows up like five planets success i would say that's a right, success right, 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 for right, right. yeah the first order of the empire you know yeah yeah <coughs> oh for me God. i didn't even question it because i'm just like well yeah everyone needs a home base mm-hmm they're not going to just occupy someone's planet. That yeah, doesn't sound like, smart. Yeah, they need like a big weapon and like that, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, a weapon slash home base away from everything so that yeah. they're not under the government and legislation of another planet because yeah. they would be clearly outnumbered and vulnerable at all times. Yeah, and like how like and it's actually kind of interesting and really smart that like it is actually a an actual planet that they have like adapted to be their 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 weapon you know i thought yeah. that was like really i was like oh man yeah. that's really cool that's an interesting like tactic yeah that's pretty cool um one big question that came up for me and all my friends mm-hmm. and the first thing that i ask for anybody who's watched it is like what is ray's deal is oh, she han and leia's daughter or is she luke's daughter i don't and know man i've been thinking about it it's like we only know her first name right we don't know right. anything about her right, skywalker um, yeah yeah, it could be Skywalker, I think. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm leaning with it. I yeah. feel like the twin thing would be interesting, like if, it, if she was... Um, a Kylo Ren's Ky- yeah, twin Kylo Ren's, sister. Yeah, like, twin sister. It would fall like, in line with the books, yeah, where she's like the twin that has the yeah, stronger, yeah, the stronger have, connection uh, with the Force. Yeah, they have two. Tw- they have twins, uh, Jaina and Jason, I think. Yeah. And then but actually they, but the, Ben... But they already, they already publicly said that they're not following the books at all. Yeah, they kind of just like wrecked like, like that whole thing, basically. Just yeah. so it makes sense, because like if they're going to make more stories in that sense, like sure there's a ton of great um, like stories to pull from, but anyone who's read that stuff just kind of knows what's going to happen, and you're not like... Yeah. You're not reinvigorating your audience for that. You know, they yeah, want new and exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. much more Even fun Robert this Kirkman, way. Even Robert like rejiggered... All of the like crazy plot points of The Walking Dead for the TV yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. like kind of what's cool about the TV show for like Walking Dead, like not to go on a tangent, but like they're taking the books as kind of like like touchstones. Like, okay, we'll take this part, but we'll kind of tell our own story and do this. And like, yeah, I feel like this new Star Wars is kind of like that. It's like, oh yeah, Han and Leia have a kid. Like, okay, that's great. Yeah, they would have a kid, and there would be some kind of like force training with them because they're like a Skywalker, you know, that'd be really interesting. That's so using that and kind of like moving and crafting your own story around that. I think it's just, is really interesting. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. I, have I don't some, know. I don't know what Ray's deal is. I, don't, my, I have some, some like 
points. Okay. <laughs> that like yeah. uh, that I'm sort of thinking through that lead me to believe. So I'm. I'm still, yeah, I'm still on the fence as well, mm-hmm. but I find I have more points for Luke than I do for Han and, Han and Leia. I do too, so, yeah. I want to cross-reference here. our points here and yeah. come to a solid conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> as, as much as we can, right? Yeah, yeah, for the, yeah right. Um, the first is, so they're the obvious ones, get them out of the way. Her mm-hmm. unexplained family background, right? Yeah. Her curious strength with the Force. Right. Right? Yep. Um, this is for, these, these are these are for Luke, by the way. Yeah. Um, the third which I think takes a little bit more thought is like the legacy and prophecy that's laid out. So mm-hmm. like Lute's lightsaber reacted to her touch. Right. And it sort yeah. of initiates this like hallucination right. where it's not really a flashback because it shows the past with Luke and R2, right. the present, and then the future with Ray battling Kylo in the force. Mm-hmm. So there's this sense that she belongs to this legacy. Right. And the only conclusion I can draw is that it's a Skywalker legacy. Um, yeah, yeah. I almost then, think that, like, um, yeah. you know, this is, like, her kind of, like, you know, the name of the movie is The Force Awakens, right? Like, her touching this lightsaber kind of, like, awakens this hidden force that was kind of, like, like I think present, like, earlier in the movie. Like, you know, she's she's great at flying, and she's, she's her and um, uh, Finn are talking when once they take down those TIE fighters are like how did you do that I don't know I just felt like I had to you know they have this whole like where they're talking over each other and they're just amazed at the yeah, skills yeah. that they both have right yeah. so yeah I think that like that's kind of like been there with her um, for a while and then yeah you're right this this touching this lightsaber like awakens it I almost had this thought that yeah we're seeing <clears throat> we're seeing her future and her visions of the future but we're also seeing like Luke's past like well, you know why would she be able to see what's happening to Luke, and then we see her own past, right? So yeah. I'm wondering if, like... And then we see something... her fighting in the in the forest with Kylo. Yeah, exactly. So I wonder, you know, like, maybe, like, something happened. Um, Luke had to, you know, uh, abandon her for, I'm, I'm assuming, for her own safety, much like they were done, they had to do when they were kids. Um, and, like, maybe, like, like, force mentally blocking these memories or something like some kind of like force power that like you know alters these memories or makes her because like she seems to have this urge for the family but we never hear anything about their family she's she's just waiting right for something you know right and we have a little bit more as well because like um when one thing i noticed the second time i watched the film is that when Kylo Ren is sort of like, she's tied up and Kylo Ren is sort of like reading her mind. He's like, Hmm, yes, I see. Um, in order for you to go to sleep, you think about the ocean. I see the island. Right. And, and I'm like, Oh, the island is this. At the end it of the could movie. possibly be the island at the end of the movie. Yeah. That she's um, either seen before. So it's almost um, like she's having these visions of yeah. where she needs, she needs to be. But yeah, I know? mean, that could be a vision of the past too. Like maybe she and Luke were there, you know? True. You know, they, it could be like a memory instead of a, a vision, you know? True, true. Yeah, very true. Um, um, also, and yeah, the, the and fact- then also there's just like Maz, like, who's lived a thousand years, and she's essentially an oracle. She's kind of like the Yoda role. Right, of, right. Like this film, and like, she just lets her have Luke's saber. Yeah. And, and says like, this belonged to Luke's father, and then him, and now you, like. Yeah. Yeah, and she's very like, you know, I don't think Maz is like a forced user in that sense. I think she's just like, like, she kind of says that she's like. Like in the in the Star Wars like canon, there's like levels of like force um, um, ability and like uh, like force sensitive is someone who doesn't have any kind of like Jedi ability, but they are like aware of light and dark and, and can kind of like yeah sense those things. Like Leia is like force sensitive because like like Luke calls out to her and she like responds to it. Um, and then in this movie, once when Han dies, you know she responds to that um, right you know, right from across across the galaxy kind of thing right so yeah Maz is definitely something with her I hope they bring her back I think that'd be an interesting you know she's an interesting character I don't think we get we got a lot of time to uh, spend time with but there's also like something I really like that he did in this movie is that um, it builds a bigger world than we're actually seeing so like every character we see has like this this backstory and these things and you're like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. Oh, Oh, we're not going to see that. Oh, we're just, we're just going to talk about it. And, and it's cool. And like, that's fine. Cause it's, yeah. it's better in your mind and it just makes sense. Like, you know, Han Solo's talking about all these adventures about swindling all these people. And it's like, ah, 
I would love to see that. That would have been cool. All right. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like you know, and all the stuff that that Lei and Han talk about with with you know uh, their son and stuff. That kind of stuff would have been interesting to to see. But I'm almost glad that we don't get that. You know, we don't have to like we don't have to experience that. We can have knowledge of it happening and then you know reap the emotional benefits of of knowing that rather than seeing it. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do hope we get some sense as to uh, what happened to kind of cause this rift. Like I have this weird theory um, that like Luke started this, this new Jedi like school basically. Um, And uh, you know, Ben Skywalker is, is, you know, the training, um, but some somewhere along the way, like goes bad. Um, And I almost think like maybe he and his classmates, these like Knights of Ren that we see in that flashback, like they just, you know, descent into the force you know into the dark side and either you know kind of um you know depart and kind of just split off like that but i wonder if there's like something deeper like i I have this weird theory like if we do go with like ray as luke's daughter right Mm -hmm. i wonder if like luke has a wife right and 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 right maybe kylo like murders her you know what I mean, and and that's oh the my rift, gosh. and that would be. The I mean, thing that, that would be yeah, because I was I was trying to figure out like what okay. would make him exile himself. You know, like it was, for me, it had to have been like right something like that. So so like I was thinking about it. It's like not only would he be you know distraught from his wife's death, but maybe like let down in himself that he you know it's it's against the Jedi code to like take a wife because of all the emotional things and you right. know, he's just like because in the flashback like Ray's an orphan, but she's with Kylo. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. hear his voice telling her to be quiet, and it's like, oh, is that him? Wait. I didn't know if that was him, or, or maybe it's if, some, maybe it's someone else. I thought I, it was him. I almost took it as the um, the uh, the the scavenger leader guy. Oh, uh, okay. It could have been. It could have been. Maybe I have I it know. wrong. Um, I'd like to like watch that again and like really trying to like analyze that part of it. That seems more realistic because they don't seem like the same age. Yeah. Um. He definitely seems like, you know, it's like, it's almost 30 years. You know, I was like, all right, this kid's like maybe 30, you know, 27. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can we talk about Adam Driver and like how like amazing he did? Yeah. He was L- very surprising and very, very good. Like he was on Girls and I was like, oh, this guy, they cast this derpy dude. Because he's kind of like a weird character on Girls, but like. I saw him in Lincoln, and I was like, "Wow, he's a pretty good actor." And then in this, I'm like, "Oh my god, he's a he's great. He's so good." <laughs> I wasn't expecting that when the helmet came off. <laughs> yeah, that was a good reveal. It was like, "Oh, you know, we'll never we'll we'll see his helmet off in like the third movie or second movie or something." Yeah, and it just popped right off, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool." And then it makes complete sense because like he's not a Sith Lord. He's not like he's not Darth Vader. You know what I mean? He's young and petulant and just yeah a mess and trying to figure himself out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obsessed with Darth. Yeah. That's cool. That's a good, that's a good twist on that. I like that right away. The villain is humanized. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that's such a good testament to like where we've kind of come in film. And like, mm-hmm. that's where the force awakens is very separate from like the past two trilogies. Mm-hmm. Cause the evil guy isn't just this evil, mysterious, powerful, demystified, like mystified guy. Like, yeah, right away he's demystified. Right away we see his issues. Right away we see like where his motives could be. Yeah, and that it's not just being bad because I'm the bad guy. You know, right? When Which, it, I think he's much more like relatable in that sense that he's yeah, you know, he's trying to do his own thing, but you know, he's had he's got these like father issues that that kind of haunt him um that he's yeah. like forced to deal with um yeah man he's just much more a much more human villain which i think um i That's think the great. series like needed that the series you know the series works great with you know the big baddie kind of thing but like yeah. you know letting letting an audience like emotionally connect to the villain i think is is a really smart idea on that yeah. sense though right now i think everyone thinks he's an asshole for kind of sad <laughs> we don't know the fuel behind like his murder yeah we why? don't know all of it and i'm yeah. really curious to know that has me like yeah Jones i was, in to see I was almost thinking episode. about it too like i almost wonder if it was like a kind of like a deal with the devil kind of thing like han solo doesn't seem like the kind of guy to just like let that happen or like let something happen i feel like i don't know there's got to be something with it where where 
I don't know, Leia talks about like losing both of them and, and sending him away. Um, yeah, I'm just curious like what they're, you know, what happened, you know, and I'm sure we'll see that unfold in some way. Yeah. Um, I'm, I was incredibly surprised, like, um, you know, outside of the film, um, how much of the film, I mean, at this point we're, <clears throat> you know, a few days out at this point, I think the majority of people have seen <laughs> the movie. Yeah. So like the, the spoilers, like no one, nothing got spoiled or leaked. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see too many. I mean, I, I saw a lot of people complaining about it. If I can be honest, I like just stayed off the internet for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I haven't seen anything blatantly horrible. Yeah. I, I mean, like <laughs> even leading up to it, like, like, Everyone was was a friend of mine stopped watching the trailers um, pretty much in the summertime. He was just like, "Okay, that's enough. I've seen enough, right?" But like yeah. me, I watched watch um, you know most of the trailers and and tried you know I didn't I didn't like actively seek out spoilers or anything like that. But right, um, even in the trailers, the trailers and the poster, any like media things that they've released really did not give away anything. Yeah. Like no, this is like the first didn't. experience that I remember going into the movies and seeing everything unfold and was yeah. like amazed at how it unfolded. Like I was watching an interview while well, I was watching many interviews, but I watched one of one of the many interviews that I saw with JJ Abrams. There was one in which he talked about how he kind of went on this, he went on this like short diatribe on like how um, frustrated he is with the state of trailers right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And that there's, um, there's so much fear around the risk of a film failing that you find act one, two, and three in the trailer. Like they almost like yeah. give you like a like a TLDR yeah. of the film. Yep. And um, and that when he when they were putting together trailers for like Star Wars and stuff, like he wanted to make sure that um it said next to nothing, but just gave you an idea of what the experience was, which is what it did. Like yeah. when I think about all the different moments, like set next to each other looking at the trailers now now that i know what happened like mm -hmm. um i found it's really just kind of like here are this he like here are the somber moments together here are the action moments together right. here are the here are like little tastes of the different kinds of things you'll get from the movie but mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with the narrative yeah exactly you know? and even like um <clears throat> when the poster came out and we saw like finn with the lightsaber we're like oh that guy's the jedi right yeah. And then the movie comes out and it's like that's not the case at all. That's incredible. Like Yeah. That's so deceiving. It's so it's it's sneaky how great that, <laughs> that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and for as much stuff was out there you, you could watch all that stuff and then go see the movie and be like the trailers didn't tell me anything about that. They, they gave me a very generic gist of what happens of where you know where the world is at this point. But then the crawl gives you that too. Like the trailers before were like Luke Skywalker's gone. Something, you know, there's this, these bad guys that are coming and nobody knows what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then that sets up, then the crawl is basically that. It's like, Luke Skywalker's gone. Uh, all these bad guys are coming. Nobody knows what to do. Yeah. It just plays out really nicely. It was, it was, I think it was an incredible, like, testament to, like, where things are right now for, for, uh, yeah, a media and, and, and websites and, and blogs that are so obsessed with like leaking it before the next guy. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so awesome that none of that came out. You know? I agree. And JJ even talked to that. He was like, and Luke wasn't in like, Luke wasn't in anything because yeah. it's not important that like he was on. And now, now that I've seen it, I sort of understand. He's like, it's important that, Based on like when and how Luke appears in the mm -hmm. actual film, right? That we don't take away from that moment by putting his moment that's actually in the film in the trailer, right? Exactly. Because like, if they if they put the one time Luke is yeah, in the film in the trailer, yeah. it would screw it all up. It was amazing, like seeing him slowly turn around and be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Oh my god, with that robot hand and like yeah, like takes that his, was so the hood off like the way Obi Wan does. Ugh, it's so good. Oh my gosh, it was just yeah, yeah. it was perfect. Do you have I any got... other like Ray Skywalker theories or anything? Um, so the yeah, so the, <laughs> the <laughs> I do, um. I think the last thing that was sort of like on my mind 
was um, one one reason that she might be Han and Leia's daughter. When Ray, um, when Ray is first seen with Leia, Han and Leia's theme plays. Yeah, and I was like, "Wait, what's that about? What is that?" Oh, about? that's interesting. You know what I mean? I wasn't sure what that meant because yeah. that's not the first time that music is kind of used as like a. Uh, a precursor to something that we might not know yet or might be revealed Interesting. later. Interesting. Oh my God. I have to watch um, that again for that. And so, yeah, I didn't really know like what that was about. Hmm. Exactly. Interesting. Um, I, one thing that was really nice and, and um, I was actually, I was talking to Paul about this too, is that like, it's great that all of this music existed and like these like thematic elements were, you know, have been established, established in these other yeah. movies. So that almost like JJ could be like filming, Okay, we're gonna push in on Ray, and the Skywalker theme is gonna start, and then yeah. it's gonna hit this note and open your eyes and push back. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, he yeah. He could choreograph stuff <laughs> like around that, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it's it's such a testament for how good this music is because you know there's you know seven movies at this point for all these themes to kind of come up and and be used and stuff and you would think after seven movies they're they're it would get old but none of it gets old it's all Not like powerful all. like the music starts with like with 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 a title coming up and i i like welled up um when i first saw it it was Hell like yeah. oh my god it's so incredible yeah and then like at the end with like Dude, i got emotional when the first title just came out uh, like me too man it was so great like that lucas film thing came up and i was like yes i'm back in my childhood <laughs> and like even like with with you know like the han and leia theme like playing at the end and it's like sadder it's it's so powerful man it's 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 incredible like you have like the 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 most talented people working on this movie it's yeah it's great and all these new people like all the you know daisy ridley and and john boyega and uh um adam driver and uh oscar isaacs like all incredible like none of them are bad they're all just incredible actors it's it's yeah it's i love it man it's so awesome. And I was like, oh, BT dubs, half the cast of freaking, uh, what's it called? <laughs> what's it called? Of Ex Machina is in this film. Dude, yeah, right. Yeah. With, uh, <laughs> Dumal, Dumal, or uh, Donald Gleason or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so um, good. He was great, too. He did a good job. Man. Yeah, yeah. He was great. Yeah. Um, he was like, I did have, I had a challenge. So yeah. I was on the phone with our friend Gerard, mm-hmm. and I, I got on the phone with him just after he watched the film, and he had a challenge. Um and essentially, like, for him, the thing that he got frustrated with that he shared was that he found it hard to believe that Ray would be able to defeat Kylo Ren after having never used a lightsaber. Oh, and, I don't think so at all, man. I, I think it'd be and, easy to chalk it up to being the Force, you know what I mean? Because that's, like, a, that's an easy way to just Right, like, that's exactly like, oh, what I said. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And he but, didn't understand the character development with it. Yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, go no, I think, I think they established really well. Like, it was smart, smart of them to show Chewie shooting him right for him to be injured you yeah. know so they're fighting first off like like kylo ren's not he's not like a sith lord he might not even be a sith but he's definitely not a lord like sure he's in charge of stuff right right but he's still almost like 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 whatever the dark version of a padawan is like he he's got some training right snoke right. even says uh get kylo ren leave the planet and we need to finish his training right so That's already right. he's not he's not the best of the best, right? Right. And on top right. of that, Chewie, Chewie shot him, so he's like, you know, he's at like 50%, you know? Right. <laughs> he like right. meets up with them and is like trying to like, you know, Right. That was sort of my thought. He got shot and himself. he just killed his dad. So there's yeah. some things going on. Yeah, like, exactly. And like, you know, I, I can understand Finn having, you know, some kind of training with that stuff. Like he fought that other stormtrooper who had... Right. I kept thinking that he was going to come in and like finish it. Yeah. I didn't it, know that Ray was going to so ride it out the whole way. I'm so glad they didn't finish it. You know what I mean? That was one I of my biggest thing, issues with like the the original the uh, they're not the original the the prequels is that they killed every bad guy. You know what I mean? Like give us some time to like let that guy plot and scheme and come back and just make it you know save that death for the end. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. a little more like rewarding. You know, it doesn't have to be like instantaneous gratification. Like let it stew for like a few years and then and then it's much more. It's like oh man. When he got it. He got his. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree yeah. with you. I mean, I, I, saw, I get where Gerard was coming, Gerard yeah. was coming from. And I saw, that, and, and I did see, to, to his point, I did see it, like, it, it, it turned out he wasn't the only person that kind of vocalized that. Like, right. I saw, like, maybe one or two blogs that kind of got into it. Yeah. My my sort of response to that was the things that we mentioned, um, 
the fact that Ray, she might not have experience with a lightsaber, but she does have experience with combat and a pole right. arm, which is explicitly established when mm-hmm. Finn lands in Jakku and realizes that he doesn't need to help her. Like they have that whole moment where they're like, yeah, this chick can defend herself. And by the way, don't hold her hand. Cause she's yeah. not a oh, damsel dude. in distress, you know. Like, how great was that? And and to like further get away from that, like damsel in distress thing. That was another moment where I was like, oh no, that's kind of a sour note. Like when Kylo Ren kidnaps her, I was like, oh great. Like, yeah, she's just gonna it be always, like yeah. kidnapped and like uh, you know she's got to like rescue them. But like she does, it, dude. She does it herself. Sure, they meet up, but yeah. like if <laughs> if Han and uh, and Finn never made it, she would have taken that Tie Fighter and would have left. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like I'm confident that, that they, was... they took every moment to disprove any kind of preconceived notion that people would have. Yeah, like when Finn's like, "Are you okay?" and she like stops and looks at him, she's like, "Yeah, yeah." Like he why would got, you like, knocked out? Why would you ask me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so good. Yeah, you um, know what? Too like I saw it with my wife, and she she's like she's like look she's like not to be like super feminist about it. She's like, but it's so awesome. That like the main character is a woman and that she is badass and smart and doesn't need anybody's help. Like she's like, you know, she's like, it's awesome we have a son, but like she's like, imagine like having a daughter right now who's watching this movie and has someone like incredible to look up to. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, yeah. It's awesome. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. I think the movie was really cool, and that's one reason I was kind of glad that Finn was out. Yeah. A little bit. I don't know. I'm both at, both Finn and Ray both kind of represent things in a more social conversation. Yeah. That that that's that's really that's really like interesting and like empowering in that regard. But I thought that was really cool that like Ray sort of came through and like at every corner in this film like she could totally hold her own, you know. Yeah, dude, and it's like <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not going to be like, you know, like Star Wars ended racism, but like it's no, right every now. every main character in in this movie like all these new characters like they're all like like they're all people minorities. from marginalized yeah. backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like like Oscar Isaac is, is Guatemalan, I think. You know Daisy yeah. Ridley. You know Daisy Ridley's like is you know uh, women haven't really been portrayed in the best light in some of these movies and stuff. And yeah. like John Boyega, you know, he's a black dude. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like I was in like Target and I saw like like these two kids running around and they like immediately had like people to look up to and be like, I'm gonna dress as this guy. You know, yeah. it's oh, so cool, man. It's really tight. It's like, it's so awesome, man. Like everything in this movie is just like pitch perfect and like, you know, just so spot on. Like I can't, at this point, I just like can't wait to see it again. I can't wait to see it again. I can't wait. I don't, I don't even want to say I can't wait till episode eight because like it's so far. Yeah. I heard well, something's I mean, happening in 17. I don't, I mean 16. I mean, yeah, yeah. So they're doing, um, uh, like these uh, side Star Wars movies, so they're doing this one yeah. called Rogue One, which is about um, right. the team that stole the Death the Death Star plans in A New Hope. Okay, so that's, that's cool. cool. Like tangential to all this stuff, but like it's you know more Star Wars, man. And I'm sure at some point there'll be like the backlash and be like, oh my god, another year, another Star Wars. But oh, I would, dude, I would whatever. Like to, I would it's like great. to get. I would like to get to a point <laughs> like that. And like people are having that thing with like the superheroes. It's like, dude. When I was growing up, man, we had a Batman movie that was pretty awesome and a Superman movies that were, like, kind of okay, you know? Yeah. It's just, what a cool time to be, like, into, like, geeky stuff, man. I agree. It's so good. I agree. Um, so, obviously, we would both recommend this movie to anyone yeah. and everywhere. Yeah. I um, have, I have, <laughs> this is so bad. I have I have three more points that I'm really yeah. proud of. Oh, dude, you know what? I just I thought think... of another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bring it okay, up. I'll cool. bring up mine. Okay, so three more points that I'm really proud of for why it's it totally makes sense that that Ray did like wrecked Kylo Ren before she before she left mm-hmm. is um you know besides raw power and stuff you know like you mentioned she has a stronger connection with the Force right. and I think the I think a good justification of that because a, a lot of people kind of come out saying like Kylo Ren has been through so many battles like he's been such a leader and obviously like you you kind of you kind of nailed it on the head by saying like yeah but he's not a Sith lord like he's clearly right. still learning mm-hmm. and I think in addition to that like um I think back when Luke was first training um with Obi-Wan on the Millennium Falcon mm-hmm. and he sort of was like with that little like floating training program or whatever yeah. yep. and like Obi-Wan was essentially like, close your eyes, and if you trust in the Force enough, like, yeah, it'll, it'll guide you'll be you, able yes. to wreck it. And then yep. he just starts wrecking things, yeah. relying on the Force and the Force alone, which yep. which lends weight to the belief that 
if you rely on the force, it sort of supersedes combat experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just let you, that's yeah, all you need because like, you can start wrecking things with your eyes closed. Yeah, this, he says it's like it'll guide you and you know all these things. That's, yeah, yeah and then perfect. Th- second, my, the second time I ran through that battle, like sixty-five percent of the battle is Ray running. Like yeah, it's her like, escaping him. It's her. not. Yeah, it's not. She's like, just like defending for her life, and even even um, cutting down trees. Like, that. And like stuff, I, I mean, or? I went like frame by frame on the trailer <laughs> back in the sure, day. Sure. Yeah. But like <laughs> you know, like his facial expressions when he's like parrying those blows are like fearful like he's he, they're just reacting like both both of them are just like reacting to this onslaught of of you know a skilled warrior and yeah, yeah and it's 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 not until she focuses you know and like like uh kylo ren says like you know something about the you know he's like he's like i can train you in the force and then exactly like, oh, his yeah, intention force, isn't even me... a killer like he right. he wants to like he wants to not abduct her. What do you recruit her? Yeah, you recruit know what I mean? her, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, he's not even going full. I mean, he doesn't have the ability to go f- full on with her because he's like hurt and stuff. So yeah, and he's almost like like toying with her at this point. Like he knows that she's like very powerful. And I wonder if like maybe he like helped unlock it for her. I mean, she kind of did on her own, but like yeah, she had her own like chi super saiyan moment. Yeah, when oh, they yeah, locked yeah. sabers. Dude, I wonder if um. I wonder if they have this connection, like going back to like the, the Ray could be Han and Leia's daughter thing. Like, I wonder if the two of them have this connection. That's why they were able to like lock onto each other. It's possible. Like, mentally, you know, like the force kind of like telepathy kind of thing. I wonder if that's, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious. Yeah. Do you have, what's your, what's your other point? Um, after that, that's it. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, so I, we were talking about like the 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 um the symmetry with some of these movies, and like watching it um the other day, I I I almost like <laughs> super forgive me for this. I yeah. almost wish that I had like a bootleg of this movie already. I um, dude, I already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so I, I can go too. like watch it again, and like I really want to do like a video essay, kind of like comparing like the visual aspects that get repeated. Um, mm. not just throughout the trilogy, but, but specifically in like seven, um, a new hope and, uh, episode one. So, so they all kind of like, there are a lot of like visual things that I kept seeing that like kind of, um, reoccur. Like episode one has like the Jedi's like sneaking, um, you know, sneaking around this base, you know, episode four has that too with Obi-Wan sneaking around the death star. And then like Ray sneaking around this, this thing. Um, and then there's also like this like desert, um, desert slave motif that keeps kind of getting repeated right so so anakin is you know a, a full-on slave you know on tatooine in the desert and stuff and and winds up being super powerful with the force uh luke is kind of like a like an economic slave in the in that sense uh yeah. you know maybe not an economic but like a like a social slave like he wants to leave but his like uncle won't let him you know what i mean like he's obviously an adult he can go do whatever he wants but because of like social and familial um like obligations he like is stuck you know he keeps saying i'll never get off this rock you know what i mean so there's that he's like a slave to that kind of stuff and then ray is like like an economic slave like she works for uh you know a guy who pays them in food not even money for them to like right like have any kind of uh, freedom in that sense he's just paying them to eat to stay alive yeah yeah the moment i realized that portions were like (laughs) loaves of bread yeah (laughs) I was like, oh. Hmm. It's so bad, man. It's like, wow, that's this is like incredible. just welfare. Yeah. Yeah, it basically yeah, exactly. So like there's like those kind of like things. There's um <clears throat> you know, obviously like the father figure in each of those movies kind of uh, you know gets killed and becomes like motivation for for those characters. Um and the the so in each of them watching that father figure get killed and being like helpless to react, you know, like being from a, from a distance, you know, like Obi-Wan sees Qui-Gon get killed from a distance and is powerless to like jump in and intervene. And then same thing with Luke seeing Obi-Wan. And then in this, like Han, everyone's watching Han unable to like get to him. It's almost like a nightmare. Like he's just like as, as close as they get, they're just never any closer. Yeah. (coughs) Sorry, man. I'm like fighting this thing. Very good. Yeah. So like even that, like I would love to like, dissect those pieces you know what i mean that and would kind be of like super cool go yeah through. 
um, and kind of like almost like stack them on top of each other, you know? <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah like, heck yeah. Like a triptych of like these these images and these like these motifs that keep getting re- repeated. I mean, you could expand it to like the whole the whole series at this point, but like I really think between just those um, just those ones, I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, there was this theory running around the internet um, a couple months ago, like leading into this. Um, I think it's called the Star Wars Ring Theory. And um, <clears throat> the premise is that uh, the prequels are actually... Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the, the terminology they use. The prequels are like reminiscent of 4, 5, and 6 in, in various ways. So both 1 and 4 work are supposed to be like mirror images of each other, right? Okay. And then 2 and 5, and then 3 and 6, right? Mm-hmm. But then as a set, as a set of 6... They're supposed to work uh, inward and outward. So, like, one and six are basically the same movie, right? And then five and two are the same movie. And three and four are the same movie. So, like, one and six is, like, primitive, you know, primitive race um, facing off against a technologically superior kind of thing. Right. And starting on the desert, you know, like, it's and starting on the desert and moving into, like a like, a more, like, luscious kind of thing. Yeah. So these like weird kind of like parallels that keep happening in this series that that they're continuing in this movie in this you know in this new trilogy. I think it's it's awesome, man. I just wanted yeah. to like dissect the stuff all day. Please do that, man. <laughs> you need I, yeah, to do I that. Think, I think I'm gonna have to once the movie comes out. And I hope the movie comes out with like a ton of features, like Lord of the Rings. I need that. Like, and they can't screw around and like wait forever to mm-hmm. release that part. Just give me everything. Yeah, I, wanna I want to give like, you the money for everything. I know, man. I'm such a sucker for those Lord of the Rings ones. Yeah, me too. I watched all of that. It was oh, great. So good. Yeah, man. Even the Hobbit ones are like great too. It's nice. Uh, well, Thank cool, you. man. This was a great discussion. Yeah, this I was love, good. I love talking about. A, I love talking about Star Wars, and I love talking about movies with you, man. So yeah. much fun. <laughs> you warm, warmed my heart during this holiday good, season. Man. I feel yeah. the same way about you, dude. Good. Likewise, <laughs> man. Well, good. Uh, we'll do this soon. We're gonna do. Um, what's the next movie that we're doing, Satchel? Uh, I forget what it's called. We said it last time. Harold um, and Maude. Yeah, my 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 phone's far away. It's a thing. It's great. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Harold and Maude. I think that's yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we will be back sometime in the near future with that. Yes. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed. All right. Thing. Thanks, guys. Take See care. Ya. Peace. The Cinephilia Anonymous telecast is produced by Satchel Drakes and Nick Murphy. Music by Mark Yunker. You can hear more of his music at yunker.ca. That's J-U-N-K-E-R dot C-A. You can follow the telecast on Twitter at C-A Telecast. Subscribe on YouTube at C-A Telecast. Subscribe on iTunes. And check out our website, C-A Telecast.com.